and I will try to uh, speak about what we are considering about formats and the different, kind, different types of media that we are discussing here because also we are talking on television and formats. Uh, we shouldn't forget that we also talk about the internet. It's the internet channel that we use and it's not television and it's not a television set as we know it for 50 years now. Um, just to introduce me very shortly, I'm working for the Austrian Broadcasting Corporation, which is a public service broadcaster, the so-called state broadcaster in Austria. We are, of course, a member of DBU. <laughs> and uh, we are doing just what every public broadcaster should do, like radio and television. But what we also do is we have a big property on the Internet, and we are quite proud that we are the biggest property in Austria for the Internet. So we have quite good knowledge about these kind of uh, media as well. New rules for new media, of course, it's new media. It's a mixture, let's say it's convergence, because it's new and old combined. The setting uh, where this scene takes place, um, of course, it's the ICT revolution that we are in the middle of. And of course, without the internet, we wouldn't be here, because this would be a television, uh, a television meeting, and of course, uh, different people would sit here. The internet makes it possible, of course, because the entry barriers are so low that me and you and all of us just consider making television on a very cheap, convenient, and efficient media like internet. And this is the funny and the interesting thing about that we take from television, we could say we, we steal ideas from television, and we're bringing it uh, to a new media. When we uh, speak about uh, convergence, which is a kind of buzzword for several years now. It's mostly about the producing part of the chain because, of course, you have this nice camera here, much cheaper than it was 20 years ago when it was only for television. We can do uh, post-production on just this personal computer. It would be very easy. It costs nearly nothing to produce, technically, to produce a good format. This is the main change that we uh, get from ICT. Uh, what is not changing, of course, is the need for creativity and the need for understanding how to do it, how to make not only format, but how to make a content. And this is, I think, the same challenge that everybody has, be it for radio, for television, for cinema, or for the internet. What I wanted to say with the punchline uh, down here is uh, that we have to bear in mind when we are producing content for the internet, and uh, specifically if it's moving pictures, that we don't have the quite uh, passive user sitting uh, in this living room at the evening, but we have a very active user having a mouse, having a desktop PC, and this is power. And this is power is shifting from the producer to the viewer. The main difference between broadcast media and online media. Therefore, I've tried to uh, put against typical expressions that we experience from television, and we, of course, experience from the office desktop PC user, which is, of course, kind of target group because it's not quite uh, children uh, playing at the evening at the PC, but it's high educated users mainly having a job, working at the office, try to inform them about what's going on in scientific community. For example, a a -T -B -N. A -T -B -N. Family centric, of course, TV is family centric. If you have a family, normally you're doing it within your family. Normally, if you're using your personal computer, it's your private business. Nobody looks on your screen. So, of course, you have this uh, to bear in mind because it uh, does something to the content and does something to what we experience from content. Uh, same like uh, after work or business. It's a complete different state of mind that we are in. But maybe... I think it's very, very easy what I wanted to say here. What I think is main, most interesting here, the linear programming. Maybe you know the expression linear program means that uh, in the broadcast world, be it radio or television, you make a program and then you press the start button and everybody has to look. But you, give the, you, 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 you dictate when is happening what. So you are the master and your users are passive audience. 
in the internet, of course, everything is fragmented. There is a mix, mixture between pull and push. Pull means I click the mouse, I pull it to, uh, towards my eyes. Sometimes I watch a, small, a short video on the internet and it's more a push, but it's a hybrid status, so it's not the same. Uh, and it's, of course, a problem if you take a TV format or a TV program and just do it on the internet because it's happening uh, different thing there. And uh, when we talked about formats, it was a nice discussion uh, just half an hour before. Um, I see uh, the expression format as just the wrap around the content. Normally there's content, everybody's talking about content, but content alone is not suitable for consuming it or for eating it or for perceiving it. You have to wrap it up in some like uh, nice uh, eatable uh, sizes. And uh, this is uh, of course nothing new because even in the beginning of the 20th century when cinema uh, evolved, then of course all these cinema directors had to do the same, to find the right language, the right skill to make a good movie. And of course it re-happened in television and now it will re-happen for the internet. The prime time uh, argument, prime time normally is uh, 20 uh, o'clock in the evening. And this, will, this won't be the prime time on the internet because the internet is an office media and we see it on our website. Our prime time is about 12 o'clock after the lunch break. It's nice on the internet because you can measure it. You don't have to ask recognition patterns for media research. You just go to your log files and you see it. It's a measurement process. This is quite nice to have. And this is a big difference to the television because, of course, you can measure. You can measure 2,000 households and then make an extrapolation and say, yes, this is Germany, this is Austria. But we can make a full measurement of every click. This is more uh, telling to us. I'm concerning here, of course, on the user's needs be it a consumer or a user, because this is the way we are thinking. I'm working for the online department in the ORF, so I'm more a web-centric guy. And uh, I think it's important also to consider these things when you try to create formats for the internet, depending, not depending on, on, on the type of media happening there. Uh, the web is very, very effective. It's terribly effective. Maybe some people, uh, uh, express it's too effective, there is, there is no feeling, there is no emotion in it, it's so, such a cold media, but it's happening, we have to adapt on it. And of course it's not only effective, it's also very efficient, not only in time, but also in money. It's very cheap to have an internet connection at home to get uh, any form of information, so this is what, what people have learned from the internet, to get fast, quick, cheap information. This is the mindset most users have from their internet connection when they use it. And I think that um, when it comes to video on the internet, we can't stand uh, diametrically against uh, this uh, feeling that the web has to be efficient. So it's quite a um, lofty task to produce uh, one hour shows for the internet or one hour documentations for the internet. Maybe it could happen, but I'm not sure if, w if one hour is sufficient uh, in a kind of format for internet video dissemination. At the moment, it doesn't look like, but it could change the next years. At the moment, it looks like the typical uh, format for the internet is about 10 to 20 minutes at the maximum, mostly slower, mo mostly shorter. It's more the MTV style that we see from the television, what's happening at the moment on the internet coming to video. But of course, uh, not, uh, not everything is bad. Mostly uh, we are profiting from uh, what's, uh, what was created in the last 10 years in terms of uh, infrastructure and of uh, ICD conversions that we can just pick the ripe fruit now and make maybe things that wouldn't have been possible 10 years ago. So of course it's the right format. Very easy. Maybe it's for some people a little bit arousing when I call it best practice. I didn't want to be provocative, but uh, just looking around um, without pre prejudice, uh, we have some kind of uh, success stories uh, on multimedia internet f coming from different sites. 
and I think it's valuable to think about uh, why, for example, video blogging got up as a good example for, for a success uh, of new types of media on the internet. Like, uh, for example, uh, the advertising industry is developing new formats for advertising on the internet. And they're doing it not for fun because they know what they do. They have to, say, they have to be efficient and now they develop their own formats for the internet. It's no more the same commercial. Um, just experienced, uh, I think it was just two weeks ago, what uh, Apple is moving uh, towards uh, video strategy with their iPod. And it's hard to believe that within some weeks, big American networks are offering TV shows on the iPod for download and for money. And they have a success here. We are talking for paid content now for more than five years. And nobody finds a way to do it. And now Apple is coming on the stage. And here it is. Maybe we thought on the, on, the, on, the, on the wrong direction, only focused on the personal computer. And now we have a gadget, a consumer electronic gadget, more sexy than a PC, more private. Can take it with me, everyone want. You download it over the internet, but not on a PC. And it's possible to sell cereals for 50 minutes and people are going to buy two US dollars for a show, which is quite hard to understand. Nobody would have believed this before. They just tried it. And of course we have um, one, 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 one story also from the uh, mobile industry, which I know quite good because we are selling content to the mobile industry in Austria. So we know their business and we know their pitfalls as well as their success stories. And of course, it will happen uh, when you look to uh, the Asian market. The mobile could be developed, developing as a quite convenient uh, user interface for video. Nobody could believe that such a small, a ridiculous small screen could be our new television, a new type of television. It's hard to imagine, uh, especially when you're coming from television or uh, television department. It's easy for me because I never worked for television. <laughs> but I think it's good to, to have an eye on it, what's going on there, what's, what's actually there. And what I um, mostly try to uh, underline here, that it's not only the internet and it's not only the browser, but it's the device. Because the media is a, a sum of different uh, factors and it's of course the connection, the distribution method, method, broadcast or TV or internet, but it's the gadget, it's the end user device, which is quite decisive in what type of media um, will be created then in the eyes of the user. And this is, I think, the critical point. What, is, uh, what picture is um, arising um, in the eyes of the user and what type of content do we have to produce for this appearance? Some technical considerations are also, of course, I think that's just one slide, so it won't be more uh, into deep. Um, what we experienced and we, what we are telling everybody uh, in this uh, concerning is, I think the codec issue is more important if you are considering that I think many of our audiences work for companies and they have their um, company PCs and they are not allowed to change anything on the PC. I'm a victim too, so I know what I'm talking about. I'm not allowed to in, uh, install a new codec. And uh, from, my, from my point of view, there are only two codecs at the moment, the Microsoft and the real. Maybe there are different codecs, much better. But if we try to address people on their offices, it's just, for, just to forget it. You won't get a good experience. People are very angry if you offer them a video and they can't see it even if, if it's their fault or their company's fault. And of course the playing time is a, is a topic we could talk, we could discuss a day on what is the, the right uh, duration time for, depends on the format. But there are very different opinions out there in the market. I have to go to the legal aspects as well, not because it's funny or because it's a, a nice issue, but, but because it's, it's terrible, uh, urgent to also focus on this, um, especially if you're considering um, making formats or making shows or making uh, productions where part of it will come from third party rights. 
uh, all of your clips uh, consisted of music. And it sounds very easy to go uh, to your record uh, <laughs> store, buy an ICD, but it will get terribly expensive. And on the other hand, there are some, some royalty-free music uh, CDs as well, but most uh, they contain is ugly. So it's not, not quite nice to get cheap music. And music is very important for a good format. Without music, it gets very dry, very, uh, let's say. I, I found it nice that you uh, didn't have talking, but only music and inserts. It was a quite nice experience, but even more than music is a critical factor. And you have to license it. And the problem is, um, the internet brought us a kind, a, a very different uh, kind of style disseminating uh, content. The classical way it was broadcasting. Broadcasting meant what I told before. You are the sender and you decide what's going on. This was this kind of real uh, the copyright holders knew as broadcast rights. So it's quite easy to, to, if you have money, it's quite easy to acquire broadcast rights for video footage, audio, logos as well. Everything you are going to build into your format, you can buy. And it's quite quick how to uh, establish uh, legal, um, uh, legal links to, to, to the owner of the copyright material. But it gets really complicated if you're going to on-demand. And of course, we are talking only on on-demand because you mentioned archive, and archive is on-demand. So this is a kind of new area for uh, intellectual property right uh, discussion. And even now, it's 10 years after the popularization of the internet. Even now, it's quite hard to acquire rights for on-demand. And what is even harder, there is no territory uh, that you are uh, containing the content. Normally, broadcast rights meant uh, a country. <coughs> Little bit spill over, over the borders, but no, mainly, mainly it's one country. Then the next step, of course, in the 80s, 90s was satellite TV. So you had a spill over, over a whole continent. So it got more expensive, but it was just broadcasting. Now in the internet, it's worldwide, per definition. Everything is worldwide. So for a music uh, royal collecting society, I will charge you worldwide rights. And not only for, yeah, and not only for broadcast, but for, but, but for on demand. And on demand means that every uh, part of music you give away, Everybody can copy it, distribute it, and so on and so on. This is why they just say no, or they make it extremely expensive, which is quite uh, a drawback uh, for what we are going to do, uh, unless we are using only copyright-free material. I don't see a uh, quick solution for this problem. Of course, you can throw it with money, but it's not our way, I think. <laughs> Even the process, acquiring rights, could take terribly long. And it's not the main focus for being creative to just um, make a legal, a lawyer's degree just to m make a nice content format. And of course, it's uh, not only uh, music, but it's also images, graphics, logos. Everything is protected at the moment. So it gets very hard to make a good format. Even if it's uh, filming in a gallery, there are pictures behind you. You have to acquire the rights. And there is just another thing I didn't mention here. If you're um, filming people, not politicians or not uh, superstars from sports athletes or so, not persons of public interest, every other person you have to ask before, if he's willing and he's saying yes, that you make a format for the internet or for the television. So normally, every person has to say, uh, a, a, has to sign a written uh, agreement that you make uh, material out of uh, his speech, his face, or his body. Um, this is why we are into deep problems, uh, because we have a nice archive. The ORF archive is dating back to the 50s, but we can't use it for internet, because some persons are dead. And we had to discuss it with their heirs. If they are willing to offer us the license for the internet, which is quite impossible, so this archive would never be on the internet, unless the Copyright law will change. Maybe the only thing I have to say here is um, on the third paragraph, um, 
that it's not all because, as you know from the EBU, from the, you mentioned the sport rights. And I was in this group uh, discussing about the sport rights for the uh, Olympic Games. And bringing the Olympic Games uh, pictures, moving pictures to the internet, it's terrible because not only um, are you forced to limit um, the distribution uh, onto your own territory, which is quite crazy if you are on the internet. <laughs> it's technically possible, but it's crazy. Uh, on top of it, they force you uh, to buy digital rights management software and hardware because they fear these nice pictures could be copied. And this is, of course, a kind of money game you have to go into. We decided not to do it quite easy because these rights are without value if, if there is so much burden on it. So, but it can happen also to you that you're going to some, some, some agency for a footage material and when they, when they hear that you are doing it on the internet, they could force you to invest on DRM. Otherwise, they wouldn't, get, they wouldn't license you the material. There is a solution, and I think it could be a solution uh, specifically in your uh, area because you are not making formats for fun or for entertainment, but for scientific um, dissemination of, of information. And uh, I think in, it's typically for Europe this scientific work is funded publicly, like our uh, television is funded publicly, and if some work or some creative work is funded publicly, public has a right to get uh, the results without paying extra for it. And it's the same in science and in public television. And this is why it's, uh, it's, Ameri it's, it's an American in initiative, but of course it's, I think, more suitable to the European situation because we have more funding, more public funding in several sectors than the United States. And I think the Creative Commons, I don't know if you're uh, comfortable with this term, it goes back to a, an American lawyer called Lawrence Lessig, uh, working for the copyright uh, um, user uh, <laughs> defending group, uh, defending them against, of course, uh, copyright holders uh, from, from the record industry and from the film industry. And he developed a model for creatives uh, w which are not going to make business out of their formats, but who are going to fulfill their uh, need or their, their uh, responsibility towards the public uh, in information or in e-learning and so on. This does not mean everything is public domain, of course, but this could mean that you decide uh, which rights you want to protect and which parts of the rights you would to want to give away uh, for others to develop their ideas on the others. Because if we, um, going on to your thoughts from the, format, from the format wars now, that everything is patented or everything is closed, if you compare this to science, if there, would, if there wouldn't be science discussion worldwide, there wouldn't be any improvements because I can't, share, I can't on the one hand share ideas and on the other hand protect it. It's a contradiction. And ideas are much more valuable if you can share it because you get, you get proof of concept and you get, of course, falsification. So I think it's more, impo more important to share ideas and, of course, accepting that others uh, take your ideas and improve it. Not copy it or plagiarize it, but improve it or discuss on it, reflect on it. I think this is a kind of uh, situation we, are, or we should considering to, and of course this means not only taking uh, rights cheaper or liberally, but also letting them go away to third parties. It's a kind of give and take material. And therefore Creative Commons uh, created a, a, a big um, heap of license um, schemas that are quite easily or quite um, conveniently um, accepted. So you don't need a lawyer, it's very easy. You get it, in, I think, even in Polish, uh, in, in, I think, 25 languages now, and it's, it's improving. So it could be a convenient way to deal into. Maybe it's a little bit complicated to find raw material, third-party material being also uh, offered in Creative Commons now, nowadays. But I think this is a model that will grow in the next five years, and we should consider about it. Yeah. So much for so much for my presentation.